I saw My Hero Academia Heroes Rising, the second My Hero Academia film, on its special engagement screening on February 26th. Now, this video is coming out several weeks later, but considering that, that was a very limited run release, and it may get a second wave of screenings, and on top of that, we, there will be, of course, the Blu-ray and DVD release, or Blu-ray and digital release. I figure it's worth giving my thoughts on the film in advance of whenever it comes out on home physical media. Or home digital media, however. So, the film is set at some point after the events of Season 4. I'm not caught up on the manga, so I can't say what's gone on in the manga from where we are in the anime to the film. But it's still, season four is still airing at the time this episode comes out. But it's also during the middle of the culture festival arc, which means we're in a position that has lower general physical and probably emotional stakes in the overhaul arc, which in turn means that you can come into this film without significantly having to worry about spoiling the current season. Yes, I've heard possibly that this would be after the events of a hypothetical season five, whenever that comes out, but then even so... There is the hypothetical spoilers that, oh, in season that in season five, none of our protagonists are going to die, but eh. Either case, none of Class 1A is likely to be killed before the end of the season, so we're in a pretty steady spot. Speaking of which, the plot follows Class 1A as they are sent to Nabu Island, a remote, generally isolated island in southern Japan, as part of a more peaceful work-study program run by the Hero Ministry after the internship arc with Overhaul went much, much more dramatically. The idea behind this initiative is, due to All Might's retirement after his fight with All for One, confidence in heroes has been shaken. So to restore confidence in the next generation of heroes, the Ministry is sending students out to remote communities which lacks heroes or have a gap in coverage due to an older hero retiring, um, to basically cover the gaps and to introduce these heroes to a younger generation and give them hands-on experience in some of the more general aspects of hero work. And consequently, due to the low risk in this environment, they'll be going without any teachers or pro-heroes with them, just kind of flying solo. This also gives a chance from an animation and set dressing standpoint to present and the our heroes in an environment that is not the more metropolitan Tokyo environment that we get in the actual main ep series of, of the show. We're we're out in the boonies. We are in an environment that if you've played Persona 4, is it's very much like that. Or familiar with more pastoral anime series and films. So much Ghibli stuff. Um the one with the um I forget the name of the show. It's from PA Works. It's the one with the woman who has to, who takes on a job out in a rural community in Japan trying to revitalize the community. That sort of thing. Um, it's definitely part of, to a certain extent, kind of the cool, not just the Japanese government initiative to promote the idea for kids that, hey, maybe moving out to the countryside or staying in the countryside in these rural communities isn't that bad. Any case. In theory, if this plan, if this were to go according to plan, it would all be peaceful and relaxing and fruity, not and, and fruity, non-alcoholic, frilly drinks with umbrellas in them on the beach, until a group of villains heads the island with the plan of setting up their own supervillain utopia, where the strong can lord over the re weak. Augmented by the fact that their leader Nine has been experimented on by the League of Villains as a way to artificially recreate all for one's quirk but it's not stable. So a local kid on the island has a quirk that can stabilize it, so these villains are gunning for him. And the only thing standing in their way is Class 1A. So, to wind it back a bit, if you read my prose review of Hero Academia 2 Heroes, which I will have a link to in the show notes, I brought up that one of the issues with that film is that while a lot of the members of Class 1A were in that film, they were mostly silent for the plot or otherwise did not contribute. You had Sue and other members like basically stuck in their hotel room for a significant chunk of the events of the film. 
On the other hand, Heroes Rising fixes that complaint by leaps and bounds. And not small leaps either. We're talking like Sue or even one for all full cowling level leaps. The majority of the members of Class 1A contribute in pretty much every part of the movie, from basic hero work at the start of the film to contributing to taking down the villains at the end, in a, and in a dramatic respect, too. This is much more of a proper team-up film than Two Heroes was. I might even say that if... Um, I, I, I Almost the closest comparison in terms of level of team-up would be like... This is an, this is an Avengers level team up. Like, yeah, that's that's the best way to describe it. This is a Avengers level team up. Everyone gets their big set pieces. Everyone has their big moments to contribute to the events of the film, as opposed to where like you'll have other heroes make a quick cameo or guest appearance, or you just have a smaller number of heroes like with Ant Man where Falcon shows up, or uh, event or Thor Ragnarok where Hulk's a big part of the film's plot, but none of the other Avengers necessarily, that sort of thing. That said, this film does have this Shonen Jump movie problem, and it's it's one where if you've been watching other movies based on Shonen Jump properties over the years, from the Dragon Ball films, or Yu Yu Hakusho, or Inuyasha, or Naruto, or the Bleach films, or what have you, even the One Piece, mo Piece movies, everything looks amazing. With great action set pieces, and moments that have clear character growth, but also gives a definitive sense at the end of the movie that this is a transitory pass passing experience. That this thing that should bring the class together more strongly, and in particular should build to a stronger relationship at the end between Deku and Bakugo, um, without giving any spoilers, is not going to get mentioned at all whenever season 5 or 6 or whatever comes out which is actually kind of a bunner, never mind whether or not they're going to talk about the League of Villains project in later aspects of the show. Still, the film is tremendously animated, and considering that this is supposedly going to be the last My Hero Academia movie, the film definitely benefits from the writers going, we are going to give every member of Class 1A their moment to shine, or winkle, as the case may be, uh, in, the sh in the sun. And, again, since this is a very transitory sort of Shonen Jump movie ending where limited repercussions of the series, supposedly this film was based on initial plans for how the manga was supposed to wrap, but it's clear from how this film ends, it is not meant to be a alternate conclusive ending of the work. It is going, it is definitely its own thing. There, it's not going to step on, it is designed not to step on any toes from the anime. So keep that under advisement. And still, it's, it's great to watch. I'm glad I saw it in theaters, and I I enjoyed it enough that I will pick it up on DVD or Blu-ray. Well, Blu-ray, once it comes out, because Funimation's kind of gotten out of the DVD game, mostly. And similarly, I recommend you pick it up on Blu-ray when it becomes available for purchase, although, as of this recording... Is not cut in a release date. I will update the show notes with links for where you can get it when it becomes available for purchase or pre-order or what have you, because that may go of become available by the time this goes live. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>